wanted to make a video explaining how how these helicopters move lift up down forward backwards left and right um, and what all the components are and I, I'm not 100% certain that my explanation is correct but I'll correct me if I'm wrong and uh, if you do have the correct explanation please uh, let me know in the comments below so here we have the, the rotors the main rotor um, it spins you know, in a, I guess we're looking like this, counterclockwise direction. Um, and that creates the lift. Lifts it off the ground. Very nice. Um, you have a tail rotor over here, positioned horizontally. You know, not like a typical helicopter. A typical helicopter would be uh, positioned vertically on the side um, to counteract the force of the rotor. Now um, this is actually positioned horizontally, and when this when this uh, is on, when this is rotating, um, it creates a force that's pushing up on the rear of, of the uh, on the tail of the helicopter, and it's spinning the other direction. Then it creates a force that pushes down on the tail. Um, so simply look at it, you would think that okay, you want to move forward, you just produce a force in the back, move forward. You want to move in reverse. You spin this the other direction, and you go in reverse. Um, the problem is that twofold. First of all, how do we get left and right? And second of all, there is a concept. It's called gyroscopic precession, which um, uh, anybody who um, anybody who flies a helicopter knows that when you have something that, a gyroscope, and you put a force on it, the maximum, um, uh, you put a force, let's say, over here, um, the, where the force is felt um, is going to be 90 degrees in the direction of rotation, which means that if I have this rotor spinning in this direction, and I put a force over here in the back, right, these rotors, as they're spinning clean lift, they're also acting as a gyroscope, keeping it level. Um, if I put, put a force over here, the maximum output of that force is actually going to be 90 degrees of this, which would be over here in the rear, on the, oh, sorry, on the right of the helicopter. And that would actually tilt the helicopter to the left. If I push, put a force downward, that like this, um, that force again will be 90 degrees of the direction of the rotation. So it will be as if I am pushing down again on the right of the helicopter and it'll turn it to it'll turn it to the right. So that'll answer very nicely how we get left and and right. However, that's not going to explain how we go forward and backward. So how does this thing work? Um, what I believe is the answer that you have on top of here, this is a, another gyroscope. All right, a gyroscope connected to a swash plate. Swash plate is this mechanism that allows us to rotate freely up and down um, as it is spinning. And what happens is, is that as this thing is rotating, I, let's say I get this to rotate like this, if you can show this on camera, I tilt the helicopter. There's my gyroscope. It doesn't change direction. Let's see if we can show this over here. Spin this like this. It's not coming out very clear. So here, you can see the gyroscope spinning on top. And if I tilt the helicopter, well, one second. Tilt the helicopter forward or back. The gyroscope just stays in the same position unless I tilt it here. Let's get this clearly. Now it's spinning nice and fast. I lift backwards or forwards. It, the gyroscope stays in the same position. 
So we got a gyroscope over here, stabilizing the helicopter. And what I think is happening is that because the gyroscope is stabilizing the helicopter and is it's got heavy weights on the end, it is stronger than the gyroscope than the gyroscopic force of these rotors. And being that that's the case, if this gyroscope is spinning at the same time as this one is, um, since it's a more powerful gyroscope, when I produce when I push put a force over here, the helicopter will not move ninety degrees of the direction of rotation because the force over here is only putting a is only gyroscopic precision being applied to the lower gyroscope of the rotors. However, to the gyroscope on top, the gyroscopic precision is not being applied because it has a swash plate and it retains its position like every gyroscope does until you maximize until you go past that. Till you go till I would you know go enough of an angle that it'll it'll max out the swash plate. Um, so what happens is if this is spinning and I put a force over here, the helicopter will go forward. I put a force downward over here, the helicopter will go in reverse. If I stop the spinning and then I produce a force over here, gyroscopic recession will make it that it goes 90 degrees opposite of the force, which would be over there and go to the left. Down, it'll go to the right. So what I'm thinking is that by adjusting the speed of this upper gyroscope, as you can see, there are, there are two motors over here, one motor over here, one motor over here. This motor is connected to the gears, which, con which control the main rotor. This motor is connected to the gears, which control the gyroscope on top. So all the computer has to do is control the output speed of this um, gyroscope and just slow down enough that it's not it's not going to act as a gyroscope and allow the force of gyroscopic recession make this helicopter turn to the right or left because of the tail rotor. Um, I hope that was clear enough and I hope, uh, and I think that's the correct explanation, uh, but correct me again if I'm wrong. That's all I got. Yeah, let me just show, show you here the uh, gears clearly. So you got, you know, you got, uh, these are the gears. Right here is the gear for the main rotor. Right there. Um, it goes like that, connects to this one for the main rotor. And then you have the gears on the opposite end, right here. Right over here. This motor that connect to the to the the uh, gyroscope on top and the gyroscope on top is connected with a small little rod this tiny little rod runs up the center of of the uh, the main rotor the main rotor has a rod over here and there's another rod there's another rod inside of it so if I spin if I spin the gyroscope Oops, let's clear that up there. If I spin the gyroscope, it, it turns that lower gear. If I spin the main rotor, it turns the the other gears. It's a rod and a rod. Anyways, I think that's the explanation, and correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you.